All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first. Oh no, my mic's just broken. Oh lord, what a time! What a time to be alive! Give me a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is going to be game one between Team Pro Pets Reunited Online and oh wait, let me just spin the camera a bit. Team Pro Pets Reunited Online and Team Nut Ein Kionken. <laughs> That's German for squirrel, apparently. So the top player for Team Pro is obviously X Factor Live, as I've said before, and the top player for Team Nut is Lewis B two eighty eight. Now the difference in the OS, like Chevron's OS and total playtime, is pretty insane. Team Nut is definitely the underdogs, but Team Nut actually has been playing very, very well. They are tied for first place in this first bracket. So whoever wins this match will go into the next round tomorrow as first placed. So this should be very, very interesting. This is for the, the top dog spot. Let's have a look at our team here. These guys, we've got Sash Karin, Alma Fudd, and Autopilot on the front lines. This is going to be exciting. And we've got High Gain in the ocean. He's opting for bottom ocean. And X Factor in the eco spot, maybe air. Not quite sure yet. Uh... What? What's wrong? Sorry, I didn't... Oh, they're talking about ranked. They're talking about ranked. <clears throat> Give him one of these ones. <laughs> Alright. Um, This is live, by the way, if you guys didn't realize. Alright, and it's looking like... Tiriaki Thilo is going to be in the eco slash air spot. Random variable is going to be getting the OP... Um, title generators down instantly and they're going to start with two people on the front lewis b and major noob with czar xt4 in the northern ocean bit of a strange star here out of team nut i wonder if they've practiced this if this is like something that they've practiced let's have a gander at team pro we've got armada bots for autopilot excuse me i'm opening a red bull core bots for alma fudd and sash karin going air so the X Factor will be Armada Bots as the Eco, and High Game will be Cortex Ships. So we're going to be looking at the Northern Ocean Uncontested for Team Nut, and the Southern Ocean Uncontested for Team Pro. I think the Northern Ocean has more metal in it. I would have to consult the experts to find that out. <clears throat> but we shall see, we shall see, and it's going to be Armada Bots for the top. All right, Major Noob has been driven off by a couple of Grunts. Grunts really good at driving off these scouts in the early game. And they're using their lasers to get them. But he does slip a Rover past. Meanwhile, Team Pro doesn't actually get any scouts into the... <clears throat> into Team Nut. Oh, no. Team Nut actually getting some decent damage done early. Getting that Metal Extractor and... This metal extractor here is gonna hurt. That is a shame. Autopilot not quite paying enough attention. Alma Fudd covering this front line while Autopilot moves back. This rover in the back is gonna be cleaned up by some ticks out of X Factor. Lucky he went bots. That will be cleaned up. I don't know if they actually got any scouting off. Let's have a look. They didn't actually scout this eco player in the back. Meanwhile, Sash Karin is gonna be scouting, so it doesn't matter that they didn't get any shock troops through in the early game. He will get some beautiful scouting in that back line. And if we check this player view, we can watch that aircraft scout in the back while we keep an eye on the front line. Does spot the eco player, sees exactly what he's doing, sees that he's building the geo already, and that is valuable, valuable information. He will scout the entire front line for Team Nut, and he will find the, um, the ocean player for Team Nut as well. That is a beautiful pickup. Like, that is amazing. Sash Karin getting beautiful, beautiful scouting information there. And now they have all the information they need. Let's see if they can use it to take the win. Mad pressure here from Lewis. Showing us why he's the top of Team Einkjanken. <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that right, which I doubt I am. Or oh, bit of a bad trade here out of Elmer Fudd. You gotta remember to come in at the correct angle or else you're not gonna shoot as fast as your opponent. It looks like Team Nut is actually pressuring very, very hard. There is a fighter out for Team Nut. 
trying to or oh, trying to find this transport and i think they will find it we'll keep our eye on that transport see if he gets picked off trying to get a little run by here but that does get cleaned up now there are blitzes out here see if this transport has been picked up it hasn't yet this fighter might just miss this transport oh he does come into contact with him one two miss land 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 oh bro you could have had it you could have had it x-factor oh that is sad to see that was hard to watch oh if he had just landed earlier he obviously had his attentions elsewhere that was a great pickup for team nut there and now they have their own scout coming out there's a couple fighters here so these fighters will be able to pick off that scout before it gets too much crazy information maybe not sure about the accuracy of the fighters there. There we go. Alma Fudd being driven back a little bit by Lewis B. And this push from Team Nut is actually going to be quite difficult to hold off. Team Nut going for crazy expansion. They have the economy lead. Team Pro just getting the reclaim as much as they can. That'll boost their energy. Is that energy right? These are energy? These, these are energy right? Yeah. Sorry, not looking at the front line here. Yeah, this push out of Team Nut is ridiculous. You can see that they've clearly got over half of this midline. Team Pro actually being pushed back quite significantly. And I think it's due to this player here sharing so much energy in the early game. Although, this massive Brutes look like they're gearing up. Alma Fudd's going to make Lewis B die, maybe? He's really going, putting that pressure on Lewis B. I really hope that these stouts are going for a savage push up the sideline here. But I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of thugs here to defend it. Do they see those stouts? They see them on the map. They have been shared to autopilot now. So autopilot has a standing army to defend against these thugs. These thugs are now push, pushing in. Trying to take out these LLTs. They will succeed in taking a few of them out. Or a bull now coming down the front line. The eco player has actually moved into the ocean to contest against high gain. So high gain's actually going to have a problem here. He's going to have to defend his units. Meanwhile, the northern ocean doesn't have anything to defend them. Zar is actually moving in. Autopilot spots him, but he's too busy on the front line. They're getting pushed from multiple directions now. Sash Karin moving across to defend against Zar. And there's anti-air up here on the shoreline. Team Nut actually playing very well. I think they've gone into some super testing matches. Really refined their plays. They've been playing really good this match. Not this match, this whole tournament, I should say. This match particularly as well, they've been doing very well. They are the underdogs, but they are really pulling it out. They are doing very, very good strategic plays. Sash Karin is going to degun this LLT. And he's going to have to try and drive Zar off this beachhead. Don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He is going to walk into the ocean. So that will help him a little bit there. Because he can always pop up out of the ocean and degun this stuff. Meanwhile, Elma Fudd and Autopilot are driving Major Noob and Lewis B back. But they do have T2 tanks. Those T2 tanks on the front line are going to be very, very scary soon if they start building up. Autopilot doesn't have a factory. X-Factor doesn't have a factory either. They need some sort of T2 soon or an overwhelming massive T1. Alma Fudd's commander is a little bit AFK. He might get picked off here. He has to fall back. He does fall back, but the chase will be on with these bulls. The bulls do decide to let him go. They could have chased him and killed him, but they didn't want to risk losing those bulls. D-Guns miss out of Lewis B. These T2 tanks are going to be very scary, especially now that the mobile artillery is coming out. Stout's doing some damage. The thing about these T2 tanks as well is they have massive AoE, so it's very hard for them to miss. Damn, Zar having free reign of the ocean. We always see it on this map. Whoever has free reign of an ocean just, just gets to snowball themselves. The eco in the back doing a very good job for both teams. X-Factor sees Zar's ocean expansion and decides to build some defenses over here. Team Pro has been locked in their front line for a long time. I think Team Nut 
really rushing this front line and holding it is causing them to win. They are in that snowball position. This is very dangerous for Team Pro. I think Team Nut has really, really practiced this map. There is no other way to go about it. They are doing absolutely amazing. You can see that Zara has actually fallen back and he's building a torpedo launcher in the back. Mauser's pushing up and Autopilot's commander is going to go down any second now. He doesn't want to get too close to his own team. Does take out some army here. And he's going to have, they're going to have to use these brutes. These brutes really have to push in. They, they, this is the perfect timing for them to push in and take out this T2 artillery. I think if Team Pro push now, they could actually clear quite a significant chunk of this. D-Gun's coming up with Lewis B. Does only catch one tank. The brute push is now. The brute push is nigh. Does clear quite a few of these T2 artillery. That bull is doing absolute work, but the artillery all does go down. It's a beautiful pickup for Team Pro. They need to snipe this commander so they can get control of this reclaim field. Staying just out of position, just out of range of the commander's D-Gun is exactly what you want to be doing. Stouts or Brutes, yeah, these are Brutes. Brutes versus commanders are brutal to deal with as a commander. The two bulls should be able to hold off most of this army. Bulls just being ridiculously strong against T1 army. It looks like the Quakers are out there. Our T2 vehicles now out for Team Pro. The Quakers will be able to set up and they should gain control of this uh, middle reclaim field. But now the tick spam is starting out of Hilo New, backed up by the T2 tanks. The Team Pro just has to hold on long enough to defend this, but the Quakers are out of position. Elmer Fudd is here, though. He's going to get some D-guns off against these bulls. It's not too late. He does lose one of those artillery. The Grunts do break through, along with the Ticks. They need some... They need some, uh, like, fast attack units to clear these Ticks. The Brutes are not enough to clear Ticks. Ticks are very good counters to mass Brutes. You can see that they're running around shooting at Ticks, doing some team damage. Look at that, they take out their own artillery. This is a very good play from Team Nut here. The Tick Spam is real. They either need to set their own Tick Spam up, or they need to get some LLTs set up or something. There is an LLT here on the front, up by Alma Fudd, and that will clear the Ticks. There is a commander here that I would like to see them snipe. Damn, these Ticks breaking through is really, really screwing them. There are hovercrafts now coming out of Zar. Sash Karun, right? Yeah, Sash Karun in the ocean. A little bit AFK. I would like to see him come up, degun these, and then re rebuild these metal extractors. I think Team Nut being in the snowball position is really, really dangerous. You can see a raid coming in from this north side. We'll keep our eye on that, and I will transition over to that when they get a little bit close to the shore. Team Pro is actually in a bit of a dire situation here. I feel like they need lightning trucks. I'm not sure what the Cortex equivalent is. What is the Cortex equivalent of a lightning truck? I'm not even sure. Okay. There's a Starlights now rolling out for Major Noob, and that is so dangerous. Starlights are the strongest T2 unit, in my opinion. These Hovercraft actually managed to slip by, and now High Gain... Oh, High Gain would have been in a bit of trouble, but the Hovercraft do get caught by the Shurikens because they came back onto land. I feel like that could have been played better. If they had gone down here, they could have got a little bit of damage done, but they will get no damage done now. These Starlights, backed up by Jaguars, Bulls, Mausers, and Ticks. Man, Team Pro is really fighting an uphill battle on this one, and I feel sorry for them. You see those Hovercrafts are really getting ready to start assaulting. They've got their artillery hovercrafts over there. We'll go check on them really quick. These guys here are going to start clearing. Oh, actually, they're going to try and kill the geothermal first. Hopefully, they can't get in position without being shot by the towers. We'll see how that goes in a minute. I'll keep my eye over there so you guys can watch it. And there goes the commander. Elmer Fudd goes down on the front line. And I think it's moments from falling. Team Pro really in a dire situation. The Tremor comes out. Tremors are pretty good against ticks. But you need a decent line of them shooting to clear them. A Juno might have actually been a better play here. Uh, but Junos fire pretty slowly, so they don't last forever. The Tremor will clear some of this chaff, but not enough. I think Team Pro has lost this one. That is a dying, a dying shame? A crying shame. Uh, Team Nut is just absolutely pulling this one out of the bag. X-Factor just chilling in the ocean there. There's the GG out of Sash Karun. And Team Nut take the win for the first match. I forgot to say what map this was. This map is actually... Whoops. Hell is Basin, version 1.4. Ah, oh, so it's 1-0 to Team Nut.
Oof. Team Pro, their first loss of the Omega series. Uh, MVP would be Major Noob, I'd say. He he did very well. Or Random Variable, maybe. I'll give Random Variable a special mention because he did just boost the front line there. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next match. All right, welcome back. This will be game two between Team Pro and Team Nut. Team Nut taking out the first win against our boys, Team Pro. Sad to see, but let's see if Team Pro can redeem themselves. <clears throat> Hopefully Team Nut are even worse, worst, uh, even worse Navy players than I am. Uh, I'd like to see Team Pro redeem themselves on this map also. I'm not a huge fan of Navy, as I said in the last Navy match. If you guys watched my previous video on Team Pro vs Team PBS, because I will do these in separate videos per team. I don't want to do the whole Omega series in one long video. So I will be doing all this live. And then I'll be going back in my YouTube and editing it down to one video per team. I say one video, but it will be all three, all, all of the matches, two or three matches, depending. For each team into one video, if that makes sense makes sense to me so if it doesn't make sense to you just deal with it let's have a look i think it's called great barrier reef yeah great barrier reef remake version 1.0 i wonder why it's a remake i don't well i'm not sure if this is a bar map or a total annihilation map i don't remember this on total annihilation but i mean the last time i played it was probably like 15 20 years ago so i'm not surprised if i don't remember it Elma Futz and Autopilot starting in the same position. I think it's the exact same positions as their PBS game. I wonder if X Factor is going to be going C planes this time. It'll be interesting to see. To see if he's going to be going C planes. Uh, should be quite nice. There is one Dutch flag in Team Nut, but I'm pretty sure I heard that he was German as well, so. He just has a Dutch flag because he's probably living in Holland or something like that, or the Netherlands. And the game is about to start. Let's have a look. It looks like Elmer Fudd's going straight into energy. He will be sharing that with high gain. And I assume autopilot, yeah, is going to be doing the same for Sash Karin. X Factor will be going vehicles. Let's have a look over at the opposing team. Major Noob will be going into the pond. Not sure if he's going to be building seaplanes or if he's going to be building titles. Ops not to get a, a lab off two mixes. Might be a bit of a mistake. Let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got Armada bots, Cortex, sorry, ships, Cortex, ships, Cortex, ships, and Cortex, ships. So, one Armada, three Cortex on the front line for Team Nut. Meanwhile, we've got Cortex, 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 Cortex. So, all Cortex for Team Pro. And it's going to be Armada vehicles again for X Factor. The reason that <clears throat> Eco normally go Armada is because Armada have cheaper Eco buildings, I'm pretty sure. I definitely know that they have cheaper wind turbines. That is for certain. But I think overall they actually have cheaper eco buildings. Someone's already pinging. Not sure why. Bit of a weird one. Lewis B actually opting for the communism strat here. And sharing some energy over to his teammate Random Variable. Che is going to be pumping units out of Random Variable's lab. And I think a lot of these teams have actually practiced. Team Nut definitely must be practicing because they're way that they've been playing is so organized it's been amazing armada vehicles coming out for major noob as well all right let's have a look x factor not transitioned or anything yet oh god i've really got to go toilet now <laughs> i can't stop for a bio break and if team pro win this they're going to be going straight into the next game so maybe i'll be able to slip away for a second in the next game uh, I might actually go now while I while I have a chance before anything crazy happens. Let's just catch first blood. No first blood yet. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to give you guys a, a great little view here. And I will be back in one minute. Please bear with me, guys. This is all live, so I can't 
do anything too crazy. Uh, one second, let me just double check here. Everything's recording, because that would be a shame if it wasn't. Alma Fudd suicides, that's all good. And little raid coming in here. Let's check this out, actually, before anything else. Okay, keep your eye on this down here. Oh. They do manage to clear some energy. One title. Almost not worth it. So I will zoom out. Uh, X-Factor suicides his commander. And will reclaim it for that extra medal for his team. And nothing crazy is happening. Let's hope that Team Nut doesn't know about those OP... Oh, Lord. Seaplanes. The torpedo gunships, man. So ridiculous. All right, I will be back in one minute, guys. I'll leave this on so you can actually see player names. All right, team. Oh, oh God. I am so sorry. Oh, man, I could not hold that anymore. Looks like I didn't miss too much. Nobody's died. Doesn't look like there's any OPC planes. Well, there's some puffins coming out now. But it looks like Team Pro has learned from their mistakes and they've got a couple of fighters out to stop those seaplanes from just rolling around and clearing up all of their metal extractors. So, Tiriakatilo will be coming up against Hygain on the right-hand side here. High gain holding the middle with just a torpedo launcher and a radar. Pretty crazy if you ask me. Does get a bit of reclaim. He's reclaiming all that uh, energy. Team Pro absolutely stalling out on middle. But they are ahead in energy and metal production. Let's see what's happening over here. Random variable coming up against Sash Karin. Autopilot managing to block all this off with a couple of torpedo launchers. I would like to see a third torpedo launcher here, but he thinks that two torpedo launchers is going to be enough of an investment at this point of the game. 
and they are quite expensive. They're 170 metal, 1.8k energy. Okay. A couple of ships trying to push through. They do get past Firegain's single torpedo, and his commander won't be able to actually clear them. Oof. They could probably snipe that commander if they really wanted. Firegain has to be very careful here. Oh, he is getting... He is going to go down. High gain. Oh, beautiful pickup from Lewis. Not sure if high gain was AFK or what there. That was that was not great. Now Lewis, oh, Terry Akitilo actually killed him. And now the torpedo gunners are going to come in. Oh, God, I hate naval. <laughs> Looks like these assault frigates can actually go over this shallow water. Okay, beautiful radar out of autopilot there. It does give the vision that they need. These torpedo gunships just wreaking havoc constantly. The fighters are coming out for X-Factor, but they do get spotted and will head away to safety. And there is fighters in the back here. Fighters for X-Factor will bail. I would like to sit and turn around and clear this, but they won't get a chance to. Sash Corinne versus Random Variable. Man, those seaplane torpedo gunships are just ridiculous. People pinging left and right everywhere. Uh, letting them know that Sash Corinne's commander is here. I think Random Variable is going to go for a comm bomb here onto Sash Corinne's commander. Uh, I'd say that's not the greatest move because Autopilot's here. He does both commanders comm bomb. Autopilot's going to be here to clean up the mess. And there is 5.2k metal just chilling here. He's got to watch out for these torpedo gunships. Shay is now moving in to reclaim. I would like to see Autopilot reclaim this, but he's got to be careful of those gunships, man. They, I mean, those torpedo launchers. They are so OP. Shay getting up a floating AA tower. Absolutely beautiful play from Shay there, but it does go down before he can build it. I'd like to see a little bit more AA out of Team Pro over here. Controlling this reclaim field is really essential at this point in time because everybody is stalling out on metal. Metal is the one thing they need to progress here. The torpedo bombers are just so overpowered. <laughs> there is... Not a whole lot of AA here. I would I would have really liked to see some AA out of autopilot. Shay's commander is combombing these ships. Doesn't quite get the damage done that he was hoping for, but these torpedo gunships can. God, these torpedo gunships, man. Autopilot saying, hey, look, we've got to control this field. That is a lot of metal here. And High Gain's actually winning on the right side here. Elmer Fudd backing him up a little bit here with what he's got. I would like to see High Gain really push in and cause some damage. I mean, this is this is where my inexperience in naval battles. Oh, let me just double check that my yeah my voice is recording. Thank God. This is where my inexperience in naval battles really cuts in because I really feel like High Gain could at least split some of his army off and head straight into the base to, uh, if not do some damage, then pull this main army away from the front line. It would be really nice to see these torpedo gunships are clearing all the um construction ships and stuff that are coming to reclaim this area it just needs to be some aa up here for team pro these guys here should drop some aa what do they got slingshots not super long range but you know one or two aa here and then maybe like one aa just here would be enough to actually keep this area nice and clear or there needs to be some air up this air over here out of x factor a bunch of it should come and help clear this like, yeah, just, oh, man, those those torpedo seaplanes, I feel, are really the, des the deciding factor in this, in this map. He who holds the torpedo seaplanes holds the map. High gain really putting the pressure on on this right side. X-Factor is now getting seaplanes out himself. I think he's been doing it for a while now. He's opting not to go T2 ships. He hasn't gone for the pond again. And it looks like <clears throat> there's some titles in this pond here. I would like to see this construction bot building some more titles. But they do, of course, cost metal. 
And I also feel like high gain should push his advantage while he's got it. He only has to be careful of these bomb the uh, seaplane bombers. Seaplane, sorry, not even seaplane bombers. Seaplane torpedo gunships, I should call them. Sash Karin finding a beautiful run by here. Uh, even with these torpedo gunships, he's going to get a fair amount of damage done. He's going to really clear up this. The variable desperately trying to reclaim this lab for all the metal that he can get does all go down, and this could be crippling for Team Nut. Yes, Team Pro, let's do it. These goddamn seaplane torpedo gunships. If I have to say that one more time, I'm going to shoot someone. Turns out they weren't the deciding factor in this one. The I think having the air presence for Team Pro really, really helped them stop, stop from losing all their metal extractors on their side of the map. And this will be GG. I mean, there is a giant push coming through the center. Team Nut opting for a base race, but... Sadly, they have already lost their entire base. Uh, there is one commander left, Terry Akithilo. Autopilot's the final commander for Team Pro. And all they've got to do is hold off this army, and they've basically won. As long as these puffins don't find the commander, they should be in an okay position. The commander is invisible. It's costing a lot of energy, but I think it should be okay. These ships do actually manage to break through. Oh, this is not good. Team Pro's cleared everything on their side of the map, but I think Team Pro is going to lose a lot of their base at the same time. A little bit of Miss Micro from Pro Sash Karun. I think it was too focused on the other side of the map. These bloody torpedo gunship seaplanes. What are, what's their actual name? What's their actual name? Just torpedo gunship. Seaplane, torpedo gunship. These puffins, man. So much damage. But the bulk of Pro's base is secure. Let's see if they can actually spot the commander. They don't. They're checking the pond. Nothing in the pond for them. And the fighters will be able to come out and slowly chip away at them. Because there is no air for Team Nut on this side. They're going to look to get a little bit of damage done before they die. And there's the GG. Team Pro take game two. It is now one apiece. Yes! Let's go Team Pro! Oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Uh, my MVP screen broke. MVP, Sash Karin, because he broke through and cleared the base. Oh, although High Gain did so good on this side. I don't even know. I mean, I did go AFK for a little bit in this map, and for that, I apologize. I'm just going to have to go with the MVP score screen and give it to Sash Karin. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next match, the final match between Team Pro and Team Nut. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the third and final match between Team Pro on the left and Team Nut on the right. This is the final match to see who goes into the next bracket as number one. It means I'll start at the top of the bracket tomorrow. And I'm just going to say it right now. It's going to be Team Pro. It's going to be, it has to be Team Pro. Team Pro who are we following? And they're going to make it. Whether they make it to the top and win the entire thing or whether the, they lose the entire thing doesn't matter i'm gonna follow them the whole way and this map will be salt reef version 1.1 let's go team pro this is quite a good map I, I have played this map a few times myself quite often you'll see people transport their commanders up here and they'll build defenses up here you want to get like a little bit of anti-air up here as well we'll see what these guys opt for it's looking like random variables saying Lewis B is going to push hard. <clears throat> I'm going to try and control this reclaim and push all the way through. I'm assuming that's what they're saying. It's hard to tell they're German. They could be saying anything. So it begins. Once again, X Factor is in the safe position. <clears throat> oh god, I shouldn't have had a chocolate. <clears throat> I shouldn't have had a chocolate bar right before I started this. <laughs> but Tim Tams, man. Anyone who knows? Oh, in Waitrose, they sell Tim Tams now, and they are the best biscuit in the world. And now that we've got the important announcement out of the way, X Factor is in the safe position. He will be going Armada again. I'm assuming he's going to go bots. I'm not quite sure, though. Sash Corinna on the right hand side, Armada as well, and Alma Fudd on the end, Cortex bots. Meanwhile, High Gain is going Armada, and Autopilot's going Cortex bots. 
So I'm not sure what High Gain and Sesh Corona are doing. Are they going to share? Nope. Uh, High Gain is going to be going Armada bots, and Sesh Corona is going to be going Armada bots. So it's actually going to be bots all around on the front line here. I'm assuming it's for the reclaim. I will be surprised if I don't see any reclaim coming out. X Factor's going Armada vehicles for the eco position. Not sure if he's going to eco or if they're all going to front line. We'll see. We'll see. So we got core bots on the end, Armada vehicles, Armada bots, core bots, um, core vehicles. So a bit of a mix for Team Nut. This should be quite interesting. These medals at the back here are all very valuable. I think everywhere is two medal. Yep, everywhere is two medal. Okay. And if anybody is watching this uh, makes maps or knows anyone that makes maps, I am very interested in learning how to make maps. So get in contact with me because it is hard to teach myself. I mean, there's a lot of information on the official bar discord about how to do it, but my god. My god, it's a lot. There's multiple layers to all of these maps. And you must be some kind of wizard to be able to actually make maps on, on this game. It's crazy. There is no actual just, like, map editor. And now Sesh Karin is sending some... Why is this not following? Sending some units across. He's getting some scout units out. Meanwhile, scout units are coming back the other way. They do get pinged. These rovers might get picked up. Not quite sure yet. Oh, and Lewis B is rushing on this side. Okay, what's that? Five? He's got five grunts. Five grunts is quite scary, especially if you're Armada. But luckily, Autopilot is Cortex. So he will have enough grunts to defend this himself. A couple of rovers coming out for some vision. These grunts do get picked up. Grunts, these rovers get picked up by Alma Fudd. And now he will start comp walking forward. So pretty even start for both teams here. Team Nut looking for any gap they can. It looks like Random Variable is going to find a nice little gap to run through. High Gain might actually catch him if he's paying attention. He is paying attention, but unfortunately, so is. Who is that? Random Variable. He was paying attention. There you go. And he will run away, so High Gain will drive him off. High Gain doesn't even opt to get that. He's going to get it with his construction bot. No, he's not. He's just not going to get that two metal. That. I think that was a mistake from High Gain. I don't know if he meant to do that, but that seems like a mistake. A little bit of a battle on the left side here. Let's spin our camera so we can give you guys a nice view. You can see here that uh, Sash Karin's actually moving through the entire map. It does get cleaned up here. Let's go and check to see if any of these guys actually make it through. Whoops, wrong button. They don't manage to actually pick anything up. Do they do get a couple of rovers? Oh, yes. Get that metal extractor. These two ticks could probably clear this rover. Oh, he's not paying attention. Shoot the rover. Yes. Oh, that is a shame. I think with a little bit more micro, that could have been really good. But at the same time, Elmer Fudd's units coming straight through. This is going to be devastating. Nothing else is really happening. I think high gain and autopilot are in a good position to defend against Lewis B and rain of variable at the same time. But Alma Fudd with the units, these grunts coming straight through here, this is going to be very, very dangerous. This is what you love to see at the start of the game. Oh, beautiful. Alma Fudd's in the running for MVP. He is pulling this off. If this lab goes down, they're going to be in a very, very sticky situation. Oh, two. Yes, he does get it. And that is so worth it for Elmer Fudd. Tiriaki Tilo looking for a gap in Elmer Fudd's defense. And I think he's going to find it. Elmer Fudd's really going to have to build some units. He doesn't really have many units defending. And this group of six incisors might be able to just slip through. He does notice that. And he will bring his commander along to try and defend the southern edge. Meanwhile, he's got thugs coming in to back him up. That is going to be very, very scary for Alma Fudd. The grunts in the back moving back along. They do get cleaned up, but it is enough to draw the units away from the front line long enough for him to get some defenses up. Meanwhile, up the top here, High Gain and Autopilot working in tandem to force Lewis B back. They Oh, and Zara is here as well. I didn't even see him. They are looking to take this halfway point. And they are almost there. Beautiful D-Guns out of high gain. You love to see it. There's a lot of army value gone for Team Nut just from that. And now it opens up a gap for these grunts to push through. He has to watch out for the D-Guns out of Lewis B. That's going to be amazing. Oh, he 
just gets away from it, but he does lose enough that he has to back off. And we'll check back on those guys in a second. Teriyaki Tilo still looking to get that damage done. He's looking to slip by on the outside. There are mines here. That mine there is actually going to be beautiful. Not sure if he saw the mines or not. I think he saw the mine, but he will be driven back. This Team Pro is playing this amazingly. Yeah, no more back damage. The vehicle plant is back up and running, but no one is building from it. I'm assuming he's going to share it to Teriyaki in a second. But he needs to rebuild his metal extractors and everything. So Teriyaki Tilo is actually going to be quite far behind here. Elma Fudd and Sash Karin opting to team up on this, uh, I don't know what side you call this, the right hand side, if you, because this is the way you're supposed to be facing. I feel like Elma Fudd could do a little run by here. These incisors can clear quite a few grunts, so I think he is a little bit afraid of that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he manages to pull off. Sash Karin, I think it's Sash Karin, yeah, Sash Karin trying to get a run by, but runs straight into a, a contingent of random variables army. And they are pretty trapped here in this little choke point. I would like to see some use of these units. Thank you. Out of Alma Fudd. I think he left that a little bit too long. He he really could have got some some work done with these guys. But he's he's uh, panicking, I think. Let's check out his player camera. He is focusing on this. He's not using his grunts. Now he's starting to build rocket bots and stuff. And the rocket bots are going to be able to do a bit of damage. So, he got the advantage, but he hasn't really capitalized on it very much. I would like to see him push forward, because Team Nut actually control the majority of the map. Uh, Alma Fudd did great at the start, but it's, it's, they're, they're not in a great position, to be completely honest. High gain getting a LLT up on the high ground. I'd like to see a radar up there, maybe. The radar here is quite nice. There is a radar up there for Major Noob, and you can see that it gives beautiful vision. Random variable getting a radar up. High gain getting a radar up there as well. A little run by with the stouts. The mine did nothing. <laughs> that mine did a little bit of damage. Yeah, I feel like light mines are not super useful to be completely honest. What was that that was just shooting? Was it the whistlers? I swear they looked like something stronger. Whistler's backed up by a bunch of grunts coming in. Lewis B. I think Team Nut is putting some serious pressure on. Although Team Pro is in the snowball position, they don't have the map control to be considered fully in the snowball position. As long as they can hold the lines that they're holding, it is a 50-50 split, so they are ahead. Let's check out the back line here. We got T1 construction bots. There is T2 building here. Who has the T2 lab? I didn't actually see. Seems like it is uh, X-Factor. Good old X-Factor in the eco spot, handing out T2 to his teammates. The bulls coming to the front line should be quite juicy. The rocket bots on the front line here out of Sash Karin will start driving back these thugs. They do need to clear these twin guards while they can. I quite like using the fight command. They can see the stuff building, so the, the rocket bots using fight command here would be very, very useful. Oh, thugs going down on the front line. I feel like Sash Karin and Elma Fudd need to play a bit more aggressively. A bull coming out and being gifted to Teriyaki Tilo. And that bull alone will drive off these rocket bots. They're now going to need T2 on this front line to try and break through. A single bull can wreak havoc on T1 bots. We'll check back on these guys in a minute. High Gain's trying to push through. I'd like to see High Gain come in here and clear all this energy production. Although he does have Platypus, these Platypus are going to spot all this. They do see the commander. The commander can't degun underwater, right? Can he? I can't I can't remember. I have a feeling he can. The LLT, the cheeky LLT will take out the radar. These platypus should be cleaned up. They are gonna get a few metal extractors. I would like to see these um, energy production to go down. Lewis B managing to find a gap to slip through. Oh, he has a pretty sizable army as well. You can't lose your T2 bot. The bull, the bull coming up should lend a lot of defense here. But the Miss Micro on the bull doesn't matter. The bull's so strong. There's a bull here for the red red player as well. They need to keep this T2 construction bot alive. They don't. It's not like super essential, but it is handy to keep this bad boy alive. The Janus is coming out. Janus is very very scary no matter what units you have. And Lewis B has actually left a gap wide open here. There are a few units for Zar to, to defend, but not heaps. Pro High Gain does manage to clear all those uh, titles. 
spin this around so you guys can see what's going on on this side. Not a whole lot. They're sort of at a standstill. Elmafad, Sestra, and Tiriakatilo. Tiriakatilo, even though he lost his lab and all his army at the start, is managing to hold quite quite well. High gang does manage to snipe. Uh, who was that again? That was a uh, uh, major noob? No, that was random variable. Manages to snipe random variable. Doesn't reclaim him. Now he's going to go reclaim him. Mage... Major Noob's now moving into that position to try and get the reclaim as well. Might end up sniping high gain. Beautiful D-gun out of Sash Kroon. Don't know if you saw that. I think he got some balls with that. Lewis B is in a great position to push here. Uh, along with Zar and... Who is that? Major Noob. So that is going to be a three-player push in the center. High gain is in a great position to collapse in on them if they push too far. They are overextending. So, Autopilot and High Gain can work together to push this, but, yeah, two balls are going to be able to defend this lovely. They do have the defender's advantage as well. This is going to be a great little push for Pro. Even though it looks like they're losing ground, they can actually clear this and get quite a great metal reclaim field. Lewis B's commander is actually out of position. It doesn't seem like he is, but he is for sure out of position. This massive pawns is going to be able to rush through and get some damage done. The Brutes are great at being a human shield, or a robot shield even, but Lewis B's commander is definitely going to go down here. I don't see any way he can survive this, and there he goes. You love to see it. Does manage to slip a unit through. It is a lightning truck. Doesn't do any damage. Two thugs coming through. Probably going to pick up this metal extractor. Not sure what else they're going to be able to pick up. Most likely nothing. Bunch of ticks here are going to clear that away. Let's check back over here, and... Nobody's command has gone down. I feel like Alma Fudd and Sash Karun really could put some pressure on here. That if, if, like, look how clear and open this is. This is so open. So, so wide open. There's AA coming across, but that's nothing. Like, even just these grunts here. Are they grunts, right? These grunts here, these 12 grunts, could just run straight through here. And even if they don't get damage done, they're going to draw units away. They're definitely going to draw these units away from the front line. I think Team Pro is really in a position to win this. Let's just quickly check on Team Nuts Eco. They've got an ear player here that's not really producing anything. They've got some T1 bots for Cortex in the front. There's a fusion coming up with T2 vehicle bay. There's T1 vehicle lab where they've all pretty much got T2 metal now and a T1 bot lab out for Lewis B. But meanwhile, just while we have time, oh, excuse me, that must have been nauseating to watch. We've got T1 bot lab on this side, T two T1 bot labs here for high gain. We got the T2 vehicle bay that is pumping starlights out now with a whopping wait a minute, that's not all of them. There we go. 29 build turrets. Construction turrets, sorry. Beautiful snipe there. I think that was Major Noob's commander. Just went down. That is lovely. There's a single bull pushing up on this right side, and surely he sees now that there's nothing here to defend this. There's, no, there's nothing here, just just push. Elma Fudd and Sash Karun should just push. Uh, yeah, so I think Team Pro, if you look at the Eco tab, they are ridiculously ahead right now, and it's only a matter of time before they win, unless there's something crazy like a bombing run, like a really well-played bombing run out of Team Nut. But I don't think they're going to be able to pull this off. Let's get a nice angle to watch this push from. These bulls just slowly working their way forward. They could almost... These guys here could just rush through as well. I think they're quite afraid to push through. Meanwhile, uh, who is that? Is that random variable? Random variable trying to push through with a bunch of grunts. The mass ticks actually scare them off. The high gains command is a little out of position, but the army will get there in time to drive these units off. Meanwhile, this bull push is now getting driven off. I feel like the window of opportunity for pushing through and getting some serious damage done has been missed. These revive bots really need to watch out what they're doing. Oh, now the shurikens come out, but there are anti-air bots, and the anti-air bots will clean those shurikens up like it's nobody's business. Yeah, Team Pro, not overcommitting, but also not extending far enough to get the damage done that they need. They're looking to snipe Terry Akatilo's commander, and they do manage to get it. I'd uh, be very pleased if these bulls don't actually pull back and they keep going. One of the bulls will keep going. Yes, and these four bulls will turn around and keep going. Now they do really notice that there's nothing here. Nope, they will start retreating because of the grunts. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if they just pushed, it would have been a lot better. The shurikens will be able to stun them. 
How much EMP resist do bulls have now? None. No EMP resist. Yeah, so the bulls will get stunned by the shurikens. A lot of air coming out for Major Noob. Man, that's a lot of air. And all these bulls might go down. So pushing through actually wouldn't have achieved as much as I thought. I assumed that uh, Team Pro had a bit more of an air presence, but they don't. I wonder if that's going to... Oh, Marauders coming out for Major Noob. I mean, there's a giant push up here on the uh, other side. This might be game ending. That is a huge push, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what we love to see. Uh, let me get a little bit more vertical. There we go. And zoom out a little bit more. There we go. This fat boy here can get some serious damage done. But the thing is, the fat boys are so slow. You can see these units moving around the outside. They're actually coming up the edge and then everybody's collapsing in on all different angles. It's like a, it's a one-pronged attack, but it's simultaneously, it's like a three-pronged attack. Bit of a trident here. And I think that's going to be the GG. There's, there's not a whole lot they can do. There's T3 coming out uh, for Major Noob. But by the time that gets across the map, their entire base is going to be gone. All they need to do is defend against these three tier 3 units and they're good to go. The Lewis B is completely gone now. Zara is going next. High Gain and Sash Karin. No, that's Autopilot. High Gain and Autopilot doing some absolute work here. You love to see it. And this is going to put Team Pro as number one. Yeah, boy. We backed the right horse, guys. We backed the right horse. These guys are absolutely amazing people as well. They're not only very skilled at the game, but they're very humble, very nice people. So give them a shout out. If you guys have got your own YouTubes or your own Twitch streams, you know, let the world know. Team Pro is coming for you. The battle mix in the back line will start clearing up this chat. But I don't think a battle mech, or two battle mechs even, are enough to clear all of this. Starlights, bulls, grunts, like, it is an endless flood of units. Seeing this coming at you would just make you ship, ship your pants. Not sure if they captured that T3 or if they built that T3. And to be honest, I can't be bothered to check. Actually, I want to zoom out anyway to see what happened to those Marauders. They did make it through. And there's the GG anyway. They made it through, but yeah, they couldn't get the damage done that needed to be done. There's the GG. Well done, Team Pro. MVP is going to be split between Autopilot and High Gain. They really work together. Well, actually, no, I'm just going to give it to High Gain, considering <laughs> you got the cow. So... GG guys, well done high gain again for another MVP. I'm going to actually have to start tracking these guys MVP medals. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow for more Omega series.